so in this tutorial I'll walk you through on how to start loading watch hours using OKBOT and AWS so currently right now I am on my AWS account if you don't know how to create one this is what you should do just go to console.aws.amazon.com when you go to this site console.aws.com um, AWS at Amazon.com. Now, if you have an Amazon account which is free to create, um, to just usher you in. Now, the moment you get here, type E2, and when you type E2, hit um, sorry, EC2, and when you type EC2, um, click on this place which is this section, specifically click on the dashboard. Now, the moment you click on EC2, it should take you over to this section. Click on Launch Instance. Now, this is where you can now create what we call a VPS, an RUDP, a remote desktop, whichever. Now, first give this desktop a name. So, I'm going to call this YouTube Watch Hours. That's because I'll be using this for YouTube Watch Hours. Now, next, I will choose what kind of computer I would want to create. I want to create a Microsoft computer. So, I'll click on Windows and I'll scroll down. Now, this is where it tells us we should choose what kind of computer I would want to create. I mean, how many gig RAM, what kind of CPU, you get the point. Now, I want to actually state this. The stronger your computer, the more traffic you can drive. A computer that has 8 gig RAM would not give you as much views as one with 16 gig so the more you expand the ram and cpu the more thousands and you know hundreds and thousands of views you can do so i just want 4000 watch hours and i want to do this in let's say a space of um seven days which is a week so each day i would want to drop at least 200 watch hours now i would tell you the strategy i'll be using but basically, in order for me to achieve this, the configuration I would use to do this would be at least a 16 gig computer. So a 16 gig computer can get me monetized in a week. So now I'm here, all I'll simply have to do is to scroll down over and this place where it says um, free tier eligible, I will just click on where it says um, compare instance type. Now you can see that this place here, memory, is actually um, referring to the RAM, Why this other one is referring to the storage. So I'm not really that bothered on the storage. The RAM and the CPU is usually my concern. I'm going to scroll down and I'll go to where it says 16 gig RAM and I'll choose this section. Now all I have to do is to click on select instance type and this is already done. Now the rest of whatever is going to be a um, can be left at default. The only thing I would change is, or the only thing I would create is what we call a key pair. Now, if you already have like a key pair before, if you have watched any of my videos before, I once talked about key pairs. So, if you have watched an old video where I talked about key pair, you could get that, you know, use the old one. But if you're watching this for the first time, I'll just teach you how to create it again. I'm going to click on create um, new pair and I'll give it something like a name called monetization. Now I'm going to click on create key pair. Now it has downloaded the file called monetization.pem. This is basically like something we would use to be able to generate password for any computer we create as long as we use that um, key pair. So I'm just going to scroll down and I mean nothing here again matters because I've done the most important thing. Um, if I wanted to increase the RAM of the, the computer which is the storage, I would have touched it but I don't have any problem with that so I'm going to leave it the way it is. And I'm going to click on launch instance. At this point in time, a new computer is being created for me. Now, I'm currently using a, a um, Apple computer. This is a Mac. So, I mean, I don't really have like a Windows computer, but if I had a Windows computer, I could run OKBot on my computer. But more importantly, I always recommend you run it on a remote server because it's easy to always just monitor at any time. And um, it's more stable when you actually run it from a server because you have consistent internet and electricity, along with the fact you can remotely check up on it once in a while using your phone or your computer. So for instance, I'm currently using a 
um, Apple computer but I have this software called remote desktop if you check here you're going to see this software over here it's called remote desktop now if I click on this software it would or the app rather it will open up it looks something like this this is what it looks like so this app basically is an app you can use to control other computers so let's say for instance I want to control a computer in whatever location I'll just put the IP address of the computer and it would give me access to it that means if I have if I have the details like to log in so let's say for instance this computer we created on AWS which is this VPS we would have to log into this computer to download the okay, keyboard, to open our YouTube channel, to give watch hours, you know that. So all those things we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing it on the computer we created on AWS. But in order to access this computer, we're going to be using this Microsoft Remote Desktop app. Now this app is also available on mobile phone. It's also available on your Windows computer. So this is why I think um, it's best to just use a VPS, which is AWS. It's best to just create a server because when you create a server you can use any other computer to just check up on it and monitor the progress while it's doing its thing okay um, lots of talk let's head back so I'm gonna head back to the AWS you can see that it's saying success so now all I need to do next is to click on instances where it says instances over here or I can just come here again and type EC2 I'm gonna type EC2 again and I'll click on dashboard so just like we did before, we clicked on EC2 and clicked on Dashboard. Um, then it showed us Launch Instance. This time around, we're going to click on Instances. Now when we click on Instances, you're going to see that the instance we just created, which is YouTube Watch Hours, is currently running. So this means this particular server, which happens to be a Windows computer, is currently running at the moment. So now what we're going to do is to connect to this computer and we're going to now install Kegbots. We're going to create about five savers. On each of these savers, we're going to install Kegbots. And from these savers, we're going to be driving traffic to a YouTube channel to get the channel monetized um, in you know the following in this coming week. Okay, so I'm going to click on this instance ID. And now I've clicked on instance ID. I'm going to click on connect. Now it's going to show me um, this particular section. If you get to see this, all you have to do is to click on RODP client. If you click on RODP client, it has a file, which is this file over here. Now all you need to do is to download the file. You can see it's been downloaded. And drag that file to your you know, Microsoft desktop app. So I'm just going to drop it here. Good. Now I've dropped it here. You can see that it's not it's not showing YouTube watch hours. So all I need to do is to double click it. Now if I double click it, it will ask me for password. Um, to get that password, I have to click here first, which is like you know I've already downloaded the file. I clicked here to download it. So I've downloaded the whole thing. I've also dragged it over here, but I don't have the password yet. So. Um, I could get the password when I click here, but let me just open it first so you can see that it's going to ask me for password. So I'm going to go to continue. Okay, now it's asking me for password. So I just wanted to see that it's going to access for password. So to get the password, now remember when I said we're supposed to create like a key pair? Remember we, we did that something that said .pem? Good, now this is the time to use it. So I'm going to click on get password. It's telling me get Windows password. It's not asking me to upload, you know, my private key. So this is where I would click on upload, and now just look for that monetization.pem. Remember at the beginning when we created that key pair, this was downloaded for us. So I'm going to upload what was downloaded, and within few seconds, um, you know, if I click on if I click on okay it has already it has already come automatically this is it so it has generated a password or it has given me the password so I'll just click on copy password copied so if I head back again and I go to continue and I paste that password you'll be able to see I would have access to the computer I just created so now I'm going to be on this computer the first thing I would first do is to um, install Kegbot, but for me to install Kegbot, I have to disable some, you know, um, security on the computer by default. Then install Kegbot, and I will start driving traffic to that 
um so any youtube channel of my choice so i do i'll do this on the first safer i'll do this on the second safer so i'll do this on five complete savers so i might not be able to show you how i do this on other computers because it will be basically repeating the same thing i'm already teaching you so just try as much as possible to pay attention to this one video because i may not get to share the same process on the other ones so i'm going to click yes over here and this is the first thing i have to do in order to disable everything i have to click on this stats and i have to click on where it says saver manager so now i've clicked on saver manager it's going to open the saver manager like this i will show you where to just go straight in order to disable the securities um, that are needed to be disabled so as to install kegbox okay so i'm going to go to i'm going to close this and i'm going to click on where it says local server now i've clicked on local server i'm going to click on where it says real-time protection now this is going to open so i'll go straight and disable you know all this so this has to be disabled every one of them has to be disabled and now i can now install you know third-party softwares you know without having those um crazy antivirus pop-up okay so i'm going to um i'm going to proceed right now into I'm going to proceed into downloading Google Chrome. So I'm going to download Chrome. Now I still want you to remember that this is not our computer. Remember I said I use a Apple computer. Yes, I'm currently on the Mac. Um, I can actually even head over to the App Store. I mean, for those of us who don't know what a remote desktop is, this is practically we are setting another computer over the internet this computer happens to be on amazon server so this is we practically connecting to this computer now the best part of this is that i can connect to this computer from my mobile phone from my ipad from any location so this is why i would always recommend you create savers on aws or google cloud and have okay okay bot to run on them it makes things easier for you you can always delete the savers whenever it's as if the memory is getting freed up and start again with another saver Okay, so I'm going to head back into um, the computer. This is where we were. And I'm going to download Google Chrome. Okay, so I've clicked on Google Chrome. It's downloading. I know this sounds weird, but the network is crazy fast. So this is why. Now, this is another reason why I would always tell you to use a VPS because um, the network is so fast that if you're trying to drive watch hours, you know it will be it will be so it will be so fast. You know, I mean everything is so easy because the network is so fast. You can have 20 browsers streaming your video in high quality without having any form of issue. So you can see how fast the internet is. Okay. So however, we're not going to be driving traffic streets. We're going to be using proxy savers, but that will be on more advanced parts. Okay, so now we have downloaded Google Chrome. You can see Google Chrome over here being downloaded. I'm going to click Don't Sign In. A moment, let me close the edge. So I'm going to close every other thing over here. And I'm going to skip all this. And on Google Chrome, I will just head straight to okekbot.com. So on okekbot.com, I'm going to download the software, which you can see over here. We're currently downloading okekbot and within a few seconds the okekbot okay software should be ready okay so i've downloaded okekbot okay here you can see we only have two apps we downloaded the first was google chrome and then this is okekbot okay so i'm going to open okekbot okay now and i'm going to install okekbot okay now if we hadn't disabled those antivirus setup we wouldn't have actually gotten to this stage but disabling it makes it possible to download okay but and now we're opening it we're seeing another warning all we need to do is to click on more info and click run anyway then i'm just going to click on accept the agreement and click next okay bot files next and create a shortcut next next and i'll just let this work now this will take um a minimum of um 30 seconds maximum of i mean depends on how fast the computer is um the faster or the, the better ram you have and cpu 
the faster it takes to install. The computer we're currently running this on is a 4 CPU, 16 gig computer. So I presume this should be less than you know five minutes. Now if this was a slower computer, this could take like a longer time. So I would just simply hold on a bit and while it gets um, downloaded or gets installed. So why this is happening, I want you to understand this. Now you expect it to create savers to run your automations and when you're done, you expect it to delete them. If you allow this VPS to be online when you're not using them, your money reads. Amazon charges you the hours the computers are online. So for instance, I'm going to be creating five saver and I'll be driving, you know, watch hours, which is creating activities that would stream videos, you know, from certain YouTube channel. Now I'm doing this from these remote savers, you know, once I'm done, I would have to delete every one of these, you know, E2 instance. And then whenever I need to drive traffic again, that is when I will create new set of them. Now this is why OKBot basically saves your bot states on the internet. It's because we want to be able to hold your cookies for you because we know you're going to be, you know, deleting computers, which is virtual servers and creating new ones all the time. So if this was on your own local machine, maybe it would have been, would have less, you know, bothered about saving those data. But because we know you're going to be running this on so many VPS, you know, this was the basic reason why we had to hold your browser storage. And it also makes things better because then you can run your automations from any computer um, just by using your API key. Now, for those of us who just came in, the few things I said in the, um, the last one minute might be very confusing. But what I basically what was trying to say is, when you use OKBot to do, to do, to do anything, OKBot saves the browser activities on the saver, which is our saver. So even if you try to drive traffic to a YouTube channel, and after driving traffic, you had cookies, you know, things were saved on your computer. Now, normally your fear would be if I delete this computer or this saver after whatever I'm doing, um, won't I get to lose all those cookies I had, you know, gathered, right? That would have been your question. But now I'm trying to say that, okay, but already backs up every single thing a bot does on any website. So practically, you can keep creating as many savers as possible. Whenever you're done with them, you delete them. And whenever there's a need for another automation, you create new ones. And you don't have to bother about the you know, things the bot has done because we have that figured out for you. Okay, in order to run the OKBot okay app, you have to right click and you have to click run as administrator. Then we'll it open this way and you have to next up and put in your API key. So I'm going to put in my API key over here and after which I will authenticate API key. Now, just like I told you before, it's at this point it starts downloading, you know, your, bo your bot state, your cookies and every single thing you, you need to get it working. Now, let's assume I want to start driving traffic right now to a YouTube channel. I'm um, like to load a YouTube video and um, you know generate views thousands of views um, I'm going to show you that on episode 2 but I'll just show you a demonstration on how it works so I already have a task over here that you know does something similar to that and I'm just going to give you like a walkthrough on what the bot works like so I'm going to give you like a demo so now these are lots of browsers being open and each of them that opens will take us to YouTube and when they take us to YouTube they would stream a YouTube video okay at the moment it's telling us to um, sign in to confirm you're not the bot now I think why this could be happening would practically be because of the IP address we're currently using so um, Amazon AWS on its own um, it's being noted for being used as a botnet so we're going to get what we call proxies and on episode 2 I'll teach you how to get every one of these set up so let's call this um, YouTube monetization loading pro pro because we're going to be using all the pro tools to get lots of um, channels monetized and at the end of the whole monetization journey we would walk you or would walk you through as you see each of them be monetized for Google AdSense and so till next time See you on episode 2.